Let us go west, <laughs> young man. <laughs> Oregon at Utah. Yet another road favorite. Five and a half point favorite, the Ducks. Going to Rice Eccles Stadium, one of the toughest places in the Pac-12, if not the country, to play. The must, the mighty Utah student section will be rocking. Bryson Barnes, their walk on God. But can Bo Nix? This is an elimination game. It is. I, I love how quickly things can change in college football. Of course, um, this is, yeah, it's, it's now the de facto Pac-12 championship, in my opinion. The two best teams in the conference. It's, even though, yes, Washington is still out there at large, but after their very shaky performance, you can't necessarily um, say that they're going to finish unscathed. But Kyle Winningham, fantastic. We, we just found out Cam Rising, Brent Keith, they, they're going to be shut down the rest of the year. And yep. it, it just seems irrelevant at this point because of how they're playing so well. So Barnes, he did take a hit near the end of that game. And I don't know if he's going to be a little bit banged up entering this weekend, but it was interesting to me that after that late hit where he, he took that little bit of a, a smack, he did not have a catchable pass on a throwaway and a very key one, but his legs put them in position for that. Key oh, he ran right last, through the USC defense to, to which, set up that field goal. Is, I mean, that's not saying much, but you know, he still had to do it. <laughs> he still had to do it, but yeah, like, and how they got two way players going on. Like they just, Sione have, Vake. <laughs> they, they just have a mentality. So like a very much like the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. I think it's going to come down to who can tackle better in space. So why do I say that? Because, like Graham Mertz, Bo Nix has been a little bit of a conservative operating mm -hmm. quarterback. He's throwing passes really close to the line of scrimmage. His average depth of target this year is under seven yards. Average about eight and a half, nine yards. So clearly below um, the, the national mean, and that's putting a lot of heavy lifting into those receivers. Now, Troy Franklin, Tez, uh, Tez Johnson, they're obviously very great pass catchers in their own right. But the way Utah is playing, they are easily a home dog that I cannot ignore at five and a half. I think they're going to be an easy bet, in my opinion, this week. And uh, even though, yes, Bo Nix has been playing a lot better in terms of decision-maker, in terms of prudence, he himself can find explosive plays. It's just that down-to-down -down operation because of how it is so um, reliant on the yak stuff. I think because of how Utah tackles better and gets off the field better, that they're going to be able to come away not only with a cover here, Andy, but mm. a money line win straight Ooh, up. Ooh, very nice. So here's why I'm not ready to go there yet. Okay. Talk me off that ledge. Talk, talk down my optimism here. Utah went to Corvallis, a place where what do they have in Corvallis? People who are really good on the line of scrimmage. Oh, I think you said like potato hills and stuff. But that too. Yes. Oh, that okay. too. They, they, and good Pinot. Good Pinot in, in, well, in Corvallis and Eugene. The, the Willamette Valley is fantastic. So, um, but <laughs> they, they shut this offense down. And now, granted, Utah was kind of trying to figure itself out at the yeah, time. Yeah. But with the level of athlete that Oregon has on the D line, it is something that Utah has not seen. They saw one. Mm, they saw Bear I, Alexander. Well, uh, Solomon Bird is no pushover either, Andy. That's true. That's true. I mean, really, outside of the linebacker. But Alex USC, Grinch was was coordinating that defense. That is true. He was he was he was putting him in the wrong spot. He was sending them left, and the and they were running right too often. They so were slanting yeah, instead of just out athleting. Although you're not really going to out-athlete Utah. Um, and when you're getting a power pick from Bear Alexander at the end, there's really not much schematics can do at that point. Right. So <laughs> that's my that's my concern. My concern is when Utah faces a defense that has really, really good athletes who are put in the correct places. Are they good enough to operate? Are they good enough to score? Because we've seen it against... Other two, but like UCLA shut them down too. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. seven of Utah's points in the UCLA game, seven of Utah's 14 points were a pick six. But that was so, also like a midweek game. And like, take it for what it's worth. Again, also earlier in the season, trying to figure themselves out. Yep. I mean, a lot of our job is trying to hit a moving target, and Utah mm -hmm. is definitely accentuating yeah. that. Um, to, to, to They're to evolving, know, yes. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, they're, they're in now – Phase three Charizard almost, I would say, um, in terms of their... <laughs> Did not know we were going into Pokemon. 
Uh, I, I think it would be the Charmander, easiest. Charmeleon, and Charizard. Yes, my son was big into Pokemon. When, well, uh, I, I figure that would be the best allegory there to use. That would for the phases. I don't know. Could yes. the nesting jaw? Like I, I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> but because I was like trying to figure that out on the fly. But still, yeah, I because. I, we're trying to figure out who they are. I just think they're just finding a lot of pieces. But at the same time, that also goes to their favor because opponents-wise, and you have to prepare for that. It's like, what are we going to see? What What's right. there to expect? And I just think that element of surprise and playing at home, even though, yeah, Dan Lanning basically trying to replicate that style of defense that Kirby Smart has had, playing that too high, creeper, pressure type of stuff, confuse and rally with excellent technique and athleticism all comes into cards. I just think sometimes – 12 personnel under center and you can find wins that way and staying ahead of the chains. I think Utah is able to do that. Um, but yeah, I would, I mean, Oregon's the better team for a reason. They are favored for a reason. It's just, I just like the way Utah has been playing of us late and they're just really tough for me to pass up here. I am going to take Oregon. Also, because I don't like us being on the same side of everything. We can't, we can't just, yeah, we're going to have everything. some disagreements. Yeah. We, we got it. We, yeah. yeah, we, we got to every once in a while clash, but I, I probably have been, more faithful to Oregon than I needed to be. But I also think like the Oregon Washington game, I think there's some randomness involved there. There was only one fourth down decision that bothered me. I thought, he, I think he kicked the field goal at the end of the half, but like I loved going for it on fourth and, and two. I think it was more end. like the play call and I bless, yeah. bless the narrative gods because now we're evolving. Should they go for it on fourth and down to two? Should they have called that play on right. fourth down? So, yes, we are evolving as not only on-field but off-field analysts as well. So, I, I, I do like that. But, yeah, just the rollouts in that. Um, Houston, they also fell running a very similar thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Donovan Smith on the roll. He just could not place that pass perfectly. It's behind the receiver. Ball game. Texas escapes. You also – yeah, you, when, when you're rolling yeah. to one side of the field, you are limiting what you can do mm -hmm. in the pass game. You can throw to – you can throw in that direction. You can't throw in the other direction. You can't turn and run in the other direction or you're going to get mm -hmm. tackled. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. I will take Oregon. Perhaps Will Stein has learned his lesson after that play call. And if he finds himself in a similar situation, Bucky well, Irving gets the Bucky, ball. I was about to say, if Bucky Irving gets loose, you may not even have to worry about fourth downs in this game. Because, again, yeah. he, he is, I think, over the last two years, he averages 7.4 yards per touch. It's most of anybody over yeah. that span so yeah he is a special playmaker in his own right and if he can find lanes i, I to your point yeah oregon should definitely cover here but that's, i just think they i just think kyle him mucks it up and they just keep it close oh, and yeah. ultimately win thank you so much for watching just a reminder subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of andy staples on three and oh by the way watch all the other great videos on the on three sports youtube channel